talk about something that is definitely fiction. Yeah. The Game of Thrones spin-off. Yes. House of the Dragon. Yeah. You played Prince Damon. Yes, yes. Now, it's said that the second series is going to be very, very gory. How gory is it really going to be? Because the first series ends with the war about to kick off. As you'd expect, all the bells and whistles of gore and madness and relationships flying around all over the place. And we've got some wonderful new characters coming in, some wonderful new actors mm -hmm. who, are, who are on board. The great Freddie Fox has joined, uh, which I'm delighted about. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully we can deliver something again of, of great scale and ambition and... You know, and, and it has the essence and the tenacity of, of those books. Blood and guts. Blood and guts and, you know, just odd relationships. And politics, like small P politics. Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. politicians do you think would do well in that environment? Oh, stick a wig on them all and see how they get on, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Smith has been really great to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, Thank good you to so talk much to you too. Time. Thanks for your time. Irascible Matt Smith there. Well, you have been busy getting in touch this morning. Thank you for your emails, mainly about Alexei Navalny. Bob Mundell says we should stop talking and take action using the frozen assets of Russia to arm and rebuild Ukraine. Kieran Montague says it's time to cut off all diplomatic ties with Russia and double down on provision of assistance to Ukraine. Richard Craven says Putin has got away with far too much for too long. Russia has killed people on foreign soil, including here in the UK. Keep your messages coming. We do read them all. All three of you, though, I am tempted to pick up on what Matt Smith was suggesting there. And Tracy, and you were in Doctor Who, too. I was. His suggestion of putting politicians in wigs, chucking them into Game of Thrones and seeing how they got on. Is politics a bit of a performance? It's total Game of Thrones without the dragons, isn't it? I mean, if you, if you look at it, it's What's all sex and blood and gore and intrigue and people, you know. <laughs> Is that a good theory? I mean, do you think politics has to be a bit of a performance? I mean, you're in a very dramatic performance at the moment of the March of Venice, but these kind of, you know, big egos and drama and ambition. Yeah, I mean, no disrespect, but I think mm -hmm. you've got to be, in this current climate, you've got to be slightly crazy to be a politician. I mean, it's, yeah. these are dark and dangerous times. But I do think, um, I mean, my dad was always desperate for me to be in law and he used to make me watch Rumpole of the Bailey and say, look, you see, it's like acting. They just wear wigs and shout a lot. So one could say with politicians exactly that. It is a bit showbiz. Well, and Robert, you were even a well, lawyer. I mean, a it was case, my life. You know, was Wearing your... a wig was part of my daily life and I still have my wig. I've never worn a wig because <laughs> <laughs> it's you know I'm still a practicing I'm still a practicing lawyer um, and uh, though I would say look it, it's all right it, it should be about the doing remind yourself every day you look in the mirror in politics what am I here to do not what am I here to be and that's certainly what I've I, I've been in the getting stuff done brigade all my political career and that's what I'm going to continue to do do you think actually well, we're on that point, continuing to do with everything as it is. Do you think you're going to be able to hang on to your seat? Well, look, my seat has always been a marginal. I won it from Labour in 2010. I've never taken it for granted. Uh, I've, I've won elections. I've lost elections. What I do know is that I still will care about the issues like autism, like uh, the law and politics that have driven me throughout my life. And wigs. And wigs and what you achieve by de uh, defending justice. Douglas, I'm interested that you want to come back as an MP. You were an MP for a long time and a very senior minister yep. in uh, new Labour governments. I mean, as Tracy Ann suggested, some people might think, why do you, why do you want to come back? But, and how has it yeah, changed in the time you've been away? Well, honestly, I'm learning in terms of how things are different. I've spent the last eight years now uh, having the great privilege of teaching in some of the world's finest universities. I've spent a lot of time away from the UK and away from politics. But I genuinely believe politics still matters. And in that sense, I take nothing for granted. I'm working hard to win people's support. One way that I think politics has changed is it has become more performative. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the politicians that I grew up with, who I knew and revered, people mm -hmm. like John Smith, people like Alistair Darling, they were rubbish actors and brilliant politicians. Yeah. And in that sense, the privilege of actually trying to make a difference has drawn me back into the public realm, but not a single vote's been cast. We're working hard to win people's support. Oh, that's a very, very candidate on the message answer, isn't it? <laughs> and actually, I think from, from my point of view, like in mean, the play that I'm doing, we're bringing, I think I've noticed that theatre is much more about bringing politics into, into theatre as well. Mm. So I think that there is, a, there is a merging. I think ultimately everything is political. Everything is political? <laughs> it is. Everything is political and is showbiz still a present company accepted? Politics still showbiz for ugly people? I mean, look at these gorgeous men. Objectively. How can you say that? <laughs> <laughs> 
Excuse me. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. <laughs> it's present company accepted. Show of course. Business. But there's just just this vanity, though, too, isn't it? Is that fair? Well, look, I, I, yes, but let's let's get back to the message here. You know, as Douglas says, you know, it doesn't matter what you look like; it's what you do, and you get judged by your actions, not uh, uh, how you present them. The kind of American model of what you look like and those big, you know, those big TV appearances and then the, the fight off with each other, like Halloween has become our November the 5th, you know, takeover. Mm -hmm. um, that American performative politics and, and cult of publicity, you know, cult of personality feels that it's gone into our politics more Very than it probably should have done. Yes. Well, thank you all three of you for your excellent television appearances this morning. <laughs> I wasn't trying to offend you by using that old cliche. Tracy Ann, Robert and Douglas, thank you so much for spending your morning with us. Thank you you for spending your special Sunday morning with us when we've been having some fun but also mulling over the massive challenges for our politicians right now not just trying to get your votes but grappling with prejudice in our society and grasping for any solution to the nightmare problem of Vladimir Putin it is not a pretty list you can always go to iPlayer to catch up or join me and Paddy O'Connell on Sunday's newscast on BBC Sounds later and I'll be checking in on Thursdays now too with a new newsletter or fair, you can sign.